Hey, Todd Usher with Addison Homes, and today we are talking about septic systems. So I'm here at one of our high performance home sites where our septic contractor has just finished installing a septic system for this house. We're out in a rural area where there is no sewer service, so our only way to handle the wastewater from the home is to install a septic system. The way this system functions is essentially the effluent, the gray water and black water from the house, drains out of the house into a septic tank and there anaerobic bacteria actually break down the solids and the liquid effluent then drains out into a drain field and percolates into the soil, basically soaks into the soil and the soil filters that effluent. Step one for a septic system is we have to have a septic soil evaluator come out to the site, do some, some sample borings of the soil classify the soil for what type of soil it is, which then leads to how well it will percolate. And then that septic soil classifier then designs the septic system. He or she then determines how many feet of drain line we need. So once the septic effluent goes through the septic tank and is broken down, it goes out into the drain line where it then percolates into the soil. They determine how many linear feet we need and that's based on two things. It's based first on the soil type, so the percolation rate, and it's also based on the number of bedrooms in the home, which is a little counterintuitive. It's not the number of bathrooms, it's the number of bedrooms, which is more representative of how many people might be living in this home, and therefore how much waste would be generated in the home. Let's kind of follow through the system here. We start with the drain line that comes out of the house. And then that drain line, as you can see here behind me, goes into the septic tank. Now, we use an engineered polymer septic tank. It's a 1,000 gallon tank, which is the typical size that we use. And as you can see, there are two access lids on this tank, one that has a riser. We always install a riser on one, so there's access into the tank from the surface grade out beyond the house. And the only reason that you would need to get access to the tank is for ongoing maintenance. We recommend that every client initially has their tank pumped about five years after moving in, just to get an idea of how much sludge or how much solids have built up in the tank. Solids are always gonna occur. The, the bacteria in the tank isn't gonna break down all of the solids. It's gonna break down most of them, but it's gonna depend on how the uh, owner operates their drain system, whether they put greases and fats down in the septic system, whether they have a disposal or not, that's gonna result in more solids. Regular pumping of the tank, initially starting at five years to see how much sludge has built up is what is key for maintaining a septic system. Why pump the solids out of the tank? Well. The only thing that will really kill a septic system is if the solids build up in the tank and then flow into the drain line and clog the drain lines. If that happens, there's no way to salvage the drain lines. Once they've been clogged, new drain lines have to be installed. So if we manage the solids in the tank, then we won't have failed drain lines, theoretically. Now. The access with the, uh, with the riser is to allow us to get in to pump that tank on a regular basis. The solids and effluent liquids go into the tank. They drain in on this end from the hard pipe from the house. They flow into the tank and then through their process of digestion, the liquid effluent comes out of the other side of the tank. There are some channels and piping, plumbing in that tank that ensures that only liquids go out into the drain field unless the solids build up too high, which obviously is a problem like we talked about. As you can see behind me, our contractor has started covering up the drain lines, the drain field, 
and he has already had the local health department inspector has come out and inspected all of the drain lines before they're covered. Our contractor has measured all of the dimensions of the drain field and the tank location so they can draw up what's called an as-built drawing of the system. That way the health department and the homeowner will know what this system looked like and exactly what the dimensions of the system were when it was installed. So you can see behind me here, we've got a hard pipe, a solid pipe that goes from the tank back to the initial trench of the drain field. And that is just how the inspector drew up this system. He specified hard pipe for this distance back to presumably where the soil was better for percolation back here. And then what you see here is our drain line. So this particular drain line, this is what we typically use. It is what's considered an engineered drain field product. This particular product is called Easy Flow, and essentially it's very low tech to be called an engineered drain field product, but it is three bundles of styrofoam peanuts in netting. The center bundle has a perforated drain line that runs through it. And what those three bundles do is they allow the effluent flows through the center pipe, that center perforated pipe, and the bundles of styrofoam peanuts and the width that they take up gives plenty of surface area for that effluent to spread out on the soil beneath and percolate down into the soil. When it percolates through the soil, it's filtered by the soil and becomes cleaned, filtered out. And so this engineered drain field allows us to, number one, have a system that is more uh, durable in terms of its performance. The alternative would be to put a gravel bed in the trench with a drain line, perforated drain line down the center. The only downside of that approach is theoretically fines, soil fines could fill up that gravel. Could happen with the styrofoam peanuts too, although in our 20 plus years of building, we've never had one of these fail. One thing I do want to point out about the Easy Flow system is each of these bundles that is uh, styrofoam peanuts wrapped in a, in a webbing also has a fabric liner on top that prevents the fines of the soil from flowing down and clogging that bundle of peanuts. So as I mentioned, this system has been very reliable in our 22 years of building. We've not had any major failures with this system. And as long as the system is operated well and the homeowner pays attention uh, with what they're putting into the system, a septic system with easy flow should last the lifetime of a home. These drain lines are connected together for a prescribed length, and then we have a certain number of trenches to get the overall required length. In this particular system, we have one long trench here that then crosses over to a second trench that it feeds and that then crosses over to a third trench and so we have three trenches on this system to get the equivalent length of drain line that we need for this four bedroom house now we're at the opposite end of the drain field and you can see what happens down here the first trench that the septic tank feeds flows from the center of the easy flow out to the second trench, and the second trench then flows to the third trench. So each of these trenches is getting effluent from the septic tank and all draining together as one. Engineered drain field, easy flow. We could use gravel and a perforated pipe. There are other types of engineered drain field systems, but this is probably one of the most practical and uh, durable. The other benefit here is very easy to handle these. They can be picked up by hand and carried. We don't have to have a skid steer loader and tons and tons of gravel delivered to fill the trench with gravel. In a nutshell, that is the ins and outs of a septic system. You can see back there again, the hard pipe that comes from the tank. There's a hard pipe feeding the tank and then flows into the drain field. 
percolates into the soil. The keys to a septic system, proper maintenance. We want to be careful what we put into the system. So oils and fats are our enemy. They float to the top of the tank and eventually could get out into the drain field and clog the drain lines. Pumping the tank initially after about five years from moving into the house, that gives us a benchmark. That allows us to now know, okay, at the rate we've been going in this house, this is about how much sludge builds up in our septic system. And then the homeowner can judge how often to have the system pumped from then on. Could be that they could move that out to every eight, maybe even 10 years. I actually know people who've never pumped their tank and never had a problem. But we wanna make sure that we know how often we should pump the tank. We wanna maintain that system because it's expensive to replace a septic system. We don't wanna to have to dig up these trench lines or abandon them and put new trench lines in. Very expensive repair. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I hope you've learned a little about septic systems. If you'd like what you've seen, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and YouTube, and stay tuned for more educational videos to come. <laughs>